Welcome back. In this video, we're diving into the New Testament, and I promise it's not new as in brand new and improved, like your latest smartphone. No, the New Testament has been around for a couple of thousand years already. Stick around as we summarize the 27 books of the New Testament in just a few minutes. And if you enjoy this video, don't forget to smash the like button faster than Peter denying Jesus and ring the notification bell louder than the angel announcing Jesus' birth. Now, let's get biblical. The book of Matthew is the first of the four Gospels in the New Testament of the Bible. It is a narrative of the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, written by the Apostle Matthew, who was a tax collector before becoming a disciple of Jesus. The book begins with the genealogy of Jesus and his birth and goes on to cover his ministry, miracles, teachings, and interactions with various people, including the religious leaders of his time. The book concludes with the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of Jesus, and his final instructions to his disciples. Matthew emphasizes the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies in the life of Jesus, and presents him as the Messiah and the King of the Jews. The book of Mark is the second book in the New Testament and one of the four canonical Gospels. It is believed to have been written by John Mark, a disciple of the Apostle Peter. The book focuses on the ministry of Jesus, starting with his baptism by John the Baptist and ending with his crucifixion and resurrection. Mark portrays Jesus as a man of action, emphasizing his miracles and healings as signs of his divine authority. The book also highlights the suffering and persecution that Jesus and his followers endured. Overall, the Gospel of Mark provides a concise and fast-paced account of the life and teachings of Jesus. The book of Luke is one of the four Gospels in the New Testament, written by Luke, a physician and companion of the Apostle Paul. It is the longest of the four Gospels and contains many unique stories and parables of Jesus, including the birth narrative of Jesus the parables of the Good Samaritan and the Prodigal Son, and the accounts of Jesus healing the sick and performing miracles. The book also includes a detailed account of the trial, crucifixion, and resurrection of Jesus. Luke's Gospel emphasizes Jesus' concern for the poor, marginalized, and outcast, and his message of salvation for all people, including Gentiles. The Gospel of John is one of the four Gospels in the New Testament of the Christian Bible. It begins with a philosophical and theological prologue, which introduces Jesus as the Word of God who became flesh and dwelt among us. The rest of the book consists of stories and teachings about Jesus, including his miracles, discourses, and interactions with people. John's Gospel places a strong emphasis on the divinity of Jesus and his mission to save humanity. It also includes unique stories and teachings not found in the other Gospels, such as the wedding at Cana the woman at the well, and the raising of Lazarus. The book of Acts is the fifth book of the New Testament in the Bible. It begins with the ascension of Jesus and follows the disciples as they spread the gospel and establish the early Christian church. The book is primarily focused on the ministry of Peter and Paul and the growth of the church in Jerusalem, Antioch, and beyond. It also includes the story of the conversion of Saul, who was later known as Paul who became one of the most influential leaders of the early Christian church. The book concludes with Paul's imprisonment in Rome, emphasizing the power of the gospel to overcome persecution and opposition. The book of Romans is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Rome. It is one of the most influential and important books in the New Testament. In the book, Paul explains the gospel, or good news, of Jesus Christ and how it applies to both Jews and Gentiles. He argues that all people are sinners in need of salvation and that justification comes through faith in Jesus Christ, not through works or the law. Paul also addresses various ethical and theological issues, including the role of the law, the relationship between Jews and Gentiles, and the importance of living a holy life. The book ends with a doxology, or hymn of praise, to God. The books of 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians are letters written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth a city in Greece. In 1 Corinthians, Paul addresses various issues and controversies within the church, such as divisions among believers, sexual immorality, and disputes about marriage and food sacrifice to idols. He also discusses the importance of unity, the role of spiritual gifts, and the resurrection of the dead. In 2 Corinthians, 
Paul defends his apostles' hip against false teachers and those who have criticized him. He also encourages the Corinthians to be generous in giving to the poor and to remain faithful to Christ. Throughout the letter, Paul emphasizes the theme of God's power being made perfect in weakness, and he shares his own experiences of suffering and persecution. Both books contain important teachings and insights into the early Christian church, and they continue to be studied and applied by Christians today. The book of Galatians is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the churches in Galatia, a region in modern-day Turkey. In the letter, Paul addresses the issue of false teachers who were leading the Galatian believers astray by insisting that they needed to follow Jewish customs and practices in order to be saved. Paul vigorously defends the gospel of grace, which teaches that salvation comes through faith in Jesus Christ alone, and not by following the law or through good works. Paul also emphasizes the freedom that comes with being a believer in Christ, and he encourages the Galatians to live by the Spirit rather than by the flesh. He provides practical guidance on how to live a Christian life, including instructions on loving one another and serving those in need. Overall, the book of Galatians is a powerful reminder of the centrality of grace in the Christian faith and the importance of standing firm in the truth of the gospel. The book of Ephesians is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Ephesus, a city in Asia Minor in modern-day Turkey. In the letter, Paul emphasizes the unity of believers in Christ, regardless of their backgrounds or circumstances. He describes the spiritual blessings that come from being in Christ, such as redemption, forgiveness, and adoption into God's family. Paul also addresses the importance of living a holy and righteous life and he provides practical guidance on how to do so. He emphasizes the role of the church in building up believers and advancing the gospel, and he encourages the Ephesians to put on the full armor of God in order to stand against spiritual warfare. Throughout the letter, Paul emphasizes the power and majesty of Christ, who is seated at the right hand of God and who has triumphed over sin and death. The book of Ephesians is a powerful reminder of the riches of God's grace and the transformative power of the gospel in the lives of believers. The book of Philippians is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Philippi, a city in Macedonia in modern-day Greece. In the letter, Paul expresses his deep love and gratitude for the Philippian believers, and he encourages them to stand firm in their faith despite persecution and hardship. He also provides practical guidance on how to live a Christian life including instructions on humility, unity, and joyful obedience. Paul emphasizes the importance of having a Christ-centered perspective on life, and he encourages the Philippians to imitate the example of Christ's humility and sacrificial love. He also reassures them of the hope that they have in Christ, both in this life and in the life to come. Overall, the book of Philippians is a powerful testament to the joy and peace that come from knowing Christ and living a life of faith in Him. It is a call to persevere in the face of difficulty and to trust in the sufficiency of God's grace. The book of Colossians is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Colossae, a city in Asia Minor modern-day Turkey. In the letter, Paul emphasizes the preeminence and sufficiency of Christ, who is the image of the invisible God and the head of the church. He warns against false teachings and philosophies that seek to undermine the truth of the gospel, and he urges the Colossians to hold fast to the truth and to live a life that is pleasing to God. Paul provides practical guidance on how to live a Christian life, including instructions on putting off the old self and putting on the new self in Christ. He emphasizes the importance of love, forgiveness, and unity within the church, and he encourages the Colossians to pray and to be thankful in all circumstances. Throughout the letter, Paul emphasizes the transformative power of the gospel in the lives of believers, and he encourages the Colossians to live out their faith in every aspect of their lives. The book of Colossians is a powerful reminder of the sufficiency and supremacy of Christ and the transformative power of the gospel in the lives of believers. The books of 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians are letters written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Thessalonica, a city in Macedonia in modern-day Greece. In 1 Thessalonians, Paul expresses his love and concern for the Thessalonian believers, and he encourages them to continue to live a life that is pleasing to God. He provides practical guidance on how to live a Christian life, including instructions on sexual purity, brotherly love, and living a quiet life. He also addresses questions that the Thessalonians had about the return of Christ, 
assuring them of the hope that they have in Christ's ultimate victory over death. In 2 Thessalonians, Paul further addresses the topic of Christ's return and corrects some misunderstandings that had arisen among the Thessalonians. He encourages them to remain steadfast in their faith and to avoid being deceived by false teachings. He also provides practical guidance on how to deal with those who are idle or disobedient within the church, emphasizing the importance of discipline and restoration. Overall, the books of Thessalonians are powerful reminders of the hope that believers have in Christ's return and the importance of living a life that is pleasing to God in the meantime. They provide practical guidance on how to live a Christian life and encourage believers to remain steadfast in their faith even in the midst of hardship and persecution. The books of 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy are letters written by the Apostle Paul to his young protege, Timothy, who was serving as a leader in the church in Ephesus. In 1 Timothy, Paul provides practical guidance on how to lead and manage the church, including instructions on prayer, worship, and teaching. He emphasizes the importance of sound doctrine and warns against false teachings that can lead people astray. He also provides instructions on the qualifications for church leaders, including pastors and deacons. In 2 Timothy, Paul writes from prison and encourages Timothy to remain faithful to the gospel and to persevere in the face of persecution and hardship. He reminds Timothy of his own example of faithful service and encourages him to continue to preach the word of God with boldness and confidence. He also warns against false teachings and encourages Timothy to hold fast to the truth of the gospel. Overall, the books of 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy provide practical guidance on how to lead and manage the church and encourage believers to remain faithful to the gospel in the midst of difficulty and opposition. They are powerful reminders of the importance of sound doctrine, faithful service, and persevering faith. The book of Titus is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to his co-worker Titus, who was serving as a leader in the church in Crete. In the letter, Paul emphasizes the importance of sound doctrine and instructs Titus on how to appoint qualified leaders within the church. He emphasizes the need for these leaders to be of good character and to hold fast to the truth of the gospel. Paul also instructs Titus on how to teach and train various groups within the church, including older men, older women, young men, and slaves. He emphasizes the importance of living a godly life and urges believers to avoid foolish controversies and disputes. Throughout the letter, Paul emphasizes the transformative power of the gospel in the lives of believers and encourages them to live out their faith in practical ways. The book of Titus is a powerful reminder of the importance of sound doctrine, godly leadership, and practical faith in the Christian life. The book of Philemon is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to Philemon, a Christian who owned a slave named Onesimus. In the letter, Paul urges Philemon to forgive Onesimus and to receive him back as a brother in Christ rather than as a slave. He encourages Philemon to show the same love and grace that he himself has received from Christ, and he offers to repay any debt that Onesimus may owe. The book of Philemon is a powerful reminder of the transformative power of the gospel in relationships and the importance of forgiveness and reconciliation. It highlights the radical nature of Christian love and the way in which the gospel can break down social barriers and bring people together as brothers and sisters in Christ. The book of Hebrews is a letter written to a group of Jewish Christians who were facing persecution and were tempted to abandon their faith in Christ and return to Judaism. The author of the book emphasizes the superiority of Christ and the New Covenant over the Old Covenant and the Law of Moses. He argues that Christ is the ultimate high priest, who has offered himself as the perfect sacrifice for sin and has opened up a new and living way to God. He urges his readers to hold fast to their faith in Christ and to persevere in the midst of suffering and persecution. Throughout the letter, the author appeals to Old Testament texts and shows how they point forward to Christ and the salvation that he offers. He emphasizes the importance of faith, and he provides numerous examples from the Old Testament of people who demonstrated faith in God in the midst of difficult circumstances. Overall, the book of Hebrews is a powerful reminder of the sufficiency and superiority of Christ and the importance of holding fast to our faith in the midst of difficulty and opposition. It provides a rich theological framework for understanding the work of Christ and the way in which the Old Testament points forward to him. The book of James is a letter written by James, who was likely the brother of Jesus and a leader in the early Christian church. In the letter, 
James emphasizes the importance of practical faith, and he encourages his readers to live out their faith in tangible ways. He addresses a number of issues that were affecting the church at the time, including the temptation to show favoritism, the need for good works, and the importance of controlling one's speech. James also emphasizes the importance of enduring trials and temptation, and he encourages his readers to persevere in the midst of difficulty. He provides numerous examples of people from the Old Testament who demonstrated faith and endurance in the midst of difficult circumstances. Throughout the letter, James emphasizes the importance of putting faith into action, and he emphasizes the transformative power of the gospel in the lives of believers. The book of James is a powerful reminder of the importance of practical faith and the way in which our actions reflect our beliefs. The books of 1 Peter and 2 Peter are letters written by the Apostle Peter to Christian communities facing persecution and false teachings. In 1 Peter, Peter encourages his readers to remain faithful to Christ in the midst of suffering and persecution. He emphasizes the importance of living holy lives and he urges believers to love one another and to serve each other with humility. He also provides practical advice for living in a hostile culture and encourages believers to entrust themselves to God who will ultimately vindicate them. In 2 Peter he warns his readers about false teachers who were promoting false teachings and leading people astray. He emphasizes the importance of sound doctrine and urges his readers to be discerning and to test everything against the teachings of Scripture. He also encourages his readers to continue growing in their faith and to be diligent in pursuing God lines. Overall, the books of 1 Peter and 2 Peter are powerful reminders of the importance of remaining faithful to Christ in the midst of difficulty and the importance of sound doctrine in the Christian life. They provide practical guidance for living in a hostile culture and for growing in our faith and knowledge of God. The books of 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John are letters written by the Apostle John to Christian communities, likely in Asia Minor, in the late first century. In 1 John, John emphasizes the importance of love in the Christian life. He encourages his readers to love one another and to demonstrate their love for God by keeping his commandments. He also warns his readers against false teachers who were promoting false teachings and urges them to test everything against the teachings of Christ. In 2 John, he writes a short letter to a specific church, warning them about false teachers and urging them to hold fast to the truth of the gospel. He emphasizes the importance of love and obedience in the Christian life. In 3 John, John writes to a church leader named Gaius, encouraging him to continue supporting itinerant preachers who were traveling through the area. He also warns against a church leader named Diotrepes, who was causing trouble and refusing to support the traveling preachers. Overall, the books of 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John emphasize the importance of love, obedience, and sound doctrine in the Christian life. They warn against false teachings and urge believers to remain faithful to the truth of the gospel. The book of Jude is a short letter written by Jude, who was likely the brother of James and a servant of Jesus Christ. In the letter, Jude warns against false teachers who were promoting false teachings and leading people astray. Jude emphasizes the importance of contending for the faith and defending the truth of the gospel. He provides numerous examples from the Old Testament of people who faced judgment for their unbelief and disobedience. Jude also warns his readers about false teachers who were promoting immorality and perverting the grace of God. He encourages his readers to keep themselves in the love of God and to build themselves up in the faith. Overall, the book of Jude is a powerful reminder of the importance of remaining faithful to the truth of the gospel and standing firm against false teachings. It provides a warning against those who would pervert the grace of God and encourages believers to remain steadfast in their faith. The Book of Revelation, also known as the Apocalypse of John, is the final book of the New Testament. It is a highly symbolic and visionary work that describes a series of apocalyptic visions that the Apostle John received on the island of Patmos. In the book, John describes a future time of great tribulation and judgment when God will pour out his wrath on the earth and judge the wicked. He also describes the ultimate victory of Jesus and his followers over Satan and evil. The book of Revelation contains numerous symbolic images and visions, including the famous four horsemen of the apocalypse, the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls. It also describes the fall of Babylon, the ultimate defeat of Satan and his armies, and the establishment of a new heaven and new earth. 
Overall, the Book of Revelation is a powerful and enigmatic work that has inspired a wide range of interpretations throughout history. It is seen by many as a prophetic vision of the ultimate destiny of humanity and the triumph of God over evil. And there you have it, the rundown on all the books of the New Testament. Remember to click on the like button, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell to stay up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching and until the next one.